Are meta-studies and meta-analyses the golden standard of research, or are they just a mirage of scientific certainty? Let's dive into the world of meta-studies and meta-analyses to find out. Meta-studies and meta-analyses are the big fish in the research ocean. They're like the ultimate reviewers, taking numerous research studies on a particular topic, assessing them, and then drawing conclusions from the collective data. The goal is to provide a more comprehensive understanding of a research question, going beyond the limitations of individual studies. They're designed to give us the bigger picture, and that's why they're often regarded as the pinnacle of evidence-based research. But here's where things get a little tricky. You see, meta-studies and meta-analyses are only as good as the studies they analyze. They're a bit like a smoothie made from different fruits. If you have a bunch of high-quality, ripe fruits, you'll end up with a delicious smoothie. But if some of your fruits are rotten, then even the best blender won't save your smoothie from tasting awful. Similarly, if the studies included in a meta-study or meta-analysis are flawed, biased, or inconsistent, then the results of the meta-study or meta-analysis can be skewed. Also, consider this. Meta-studies and meta-analyses are often conducted by researchers who have their own biases and interpretations. They decide which studies to include, how to interpret the data, and how to present the results. So, while they're designed to be objective, they can still be influenced by the researcher's subjective decisions. Now this doesn't mean we should throw out all meta-studies and meta-analyses, far from it. They still play a crucial role in research by providing us with a broader perspective on a topic. However, it's essential to approach them with a critical eye, and understand that they're not infallible. But if meta-studies are considered the pinnacle of evidence, why then, do they have their critics? Stay tuned as we delve deeper into this intriguing question. To understand the criticisms, we need to delve into a few examples. Let's take two meta-studies conducted on the same topic, say, the efficacy of a particular health supplement, omega-3, on heart health. The first meta-study, we'll call it Study A, analyzed 20 different research papers and concluded that omega-3 supplements significantly reduced the risk of heart disease. It employed a specific methodology, which involved weighing the studies based on their sample size and the quality of the research design. On the other hand, the second meta-study, Study B, examined the same 20 papers but arrived at a different conclusion. It found no significant impact of omega-3 supplements on heart health. Now you might wonder how is that possible? The answer lies in their methodology. Study B used a different approach where they considered the effect size of each study rather than its sample size or design quality. So we have two meta-studies analyzing the same set of research papers yet reaching starkly different conclusions. This discrepancy is not due to the subject of the studies but rather the different methodologies employed. Now let's imagine a third meta-study, study C, that includes 10 additional studies in its analysis. These extra studies might have a different perspective on the topic, for instance they may consider the role of diet and exercise in heart health. This could lead to yet another conclusion, further muddying the waters. These disparities not only cause confusion, but also raise questions about the reliability of meta-studies. If the outcome of a meta-study can change drastically based on the choice of methodology or the selection of studies, then how reliable can they be? These examples lay bare the inconsistencies that sometimes plague meta-studies, raising questions about their reliability. Meta-studies are indeed powerful tools for synthesizing vast amounts of research. However, as we've seen, they are not without their shortcomings, and must be interpreted with a discerning eye. Now, let's unpack the main criticisms of meta-studies. The first criticism we'll delve into is selection bias. In a nutshell, selection bias occurs when researchers cherry-pick studies to include in their meta-studies. For instance, they might only select studies that support their hypothesis and overlook those that contradict it. This can lead to a skewed representation of the data and consequently, flawed conclusions. Next up is language bias. This bias arises when researchers only include studies written in certain languages often English. As a result, valuable data contained in studies published in other languages might be overlooked. This exclusion can lead to a distorted view of the research landscape, potentially undermining the findings of the meta-study. Then we have publication bias. This refers to the tendency of researchers and journals to favor studies with positive or statistically significant results. Studies with negative or null results often go unpublished and are therefore missing from the pool of research considered in a meta-study. 
This can result in an overestimation of the effectiveness of an intervention or treatment for example. Each of these biases can significantly skew the results of meta-studies. Painting a picture that might not accurately reflect the entirety of the available research. But it's not just about biases. There's also the issue of data quality. Meta-studies are only as good as the studies they analyze. If the original studies are flawed, then the meta-study will likely be flawed too. It's a classic case of garbage in, garbage out. And let's not forget about the issue of heterogeneity. This refers to the variability among the studies included in a meta-study. If the studies are too diverse in their design, participants, or measures, it can be challenging to draw valid conclusions from the pooled data. These criticisms don't necessarily undermine the value of meta-studies but they do raise important questions about their reliability. After all, meta-studies are powerful tools in scientific research but like any tool, they need to be used wisely and with a clear understanding of their limitations. Meta-analyses too, are not without their limitations. Now, let's delve into some of the shortcomings that can potentially hamper the reliability of meta-analyses. Firstly, we must consider the challenge of comparing apples to oranges, or in this case, different research methodologies. Meta-analyses often draw from a broad range of studies, each with its unique approach to research. Some studies might use surveys, while others could rely on controlled experiments or observational data. These disparate methodologies can introduce variability into the mix, making it tough to consolidate the results into a cohesive conclusion. It's like trying to piece together a puzzle with pieces from different sets. It's possible, but it's certainly not straightforward. Next, let's talk about the risk of overgeneralization. Meta-analyses aim to extract a general trend or conclusion from a collection of studies. However, this generalization can sometimes sweep the unique contexts and variables of individual studies under the rug. For instance, a meta-analysis on the effectiveness of a particular medication may not fully account for variations in dosage, the patient's health statuses, or the specific strains of a disease. These nuances can significantly impact the effectiveness of the medication, yet they might get lost in the grand scheme of a meta-analysis. Another limitation is the potential for publication bias. Studies with significant or positive results are more likely to get published than those with null or negative outcomes. This bias can skew the pool of studies available for a meta-analysis, leading to an overestimation of the effect under investigation. Lastly, we can't ignore the fact that meta-analyses depend on the quality of the included studies. If the original research is flawed or biased, the meta-analysis will inevitably carry those flaws forward. It's the classic case of garbage in, garbage out. These limitations remind us that, while meta-analyses can provide valuable insights, they are not infallible. Understanding these limitations helps us approach the results of meta-analyses with a healthy dose of skepticism and a keen eye for potential pitfalls. So, where does this leave us? On the one side, we have the undeniable value of meta-studies and meta-analyses. They are indispensable tools in scientific research, offering us the means to consolidate a vast array of studies into a single comprehensive overview. This unique vantage point provides a broad perspective that individual studies simply cannot achieve. It's akin to viewing a landscape from a mountaintop rather than from within the forest. On the other side, we have the limitations and criticisms that we've discussed. Publication bias, heterogeneity among studies, and the risk of overgeneralization are all potential pitfalls that can potentially skew the results and conclusions of these meta-studies and meta-analyses. So we find ourselves walking a tightrope, balancing the reliability of these tools against their potential shortcomings. But this balance is not a flaw. Rather, it's an inherent part of the scientific process. Science, by its very nature, is a dynamic, evolving field. It's a constant quest for understanding where each new discovery illuminates a piece of the puzzle, but also reveals new questions to be explored. Despite their limitations, meta-studies and meta-analyses are crucial in this quest. They allow us to see patterns and trends that might be obscured in individual studies. They help us identify gaps in our knowledge and point us towards areas where further research is needed. They provide a means to challenge established ideas and to validate new ones. But, and this is a big but, they should be interpreted with caution. They are not the final word but rather a tool to guide further inquiry. They should be seen as a compass, guiding us towards new horizons of understanding, rather than as a definitive map of the territory. So, the next time you come across a meta-study or meta-analysis, remember, they are powerful tools but they are not without their flaws. 
Understanding this balance between their strengths and their limitations is crucial in making sense of their findings and ultimately in pushing the boundaries of our knowledge. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and comment. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to keep up with the latest content.